Welcome back, my World of Warcraft players. Today we are going to be rating 61 gems that are available to you in Mists of Pandaria Remix and World of Warcraft right now as of the moment of recording of this video. Yep, I'm gonna rate all of them and 61 is a pretty high number so I'm gonna go pretty fast. No, there are no chapters particularly for this. There will be too many chapters to have in the description. So please stay tuned. Hopefully this will save you the time of running around with some inefficient gem. No, it's not stats proven or anything like this. I'm not doing a number crunching and kind of sim craft here. It is based purely on the experience of a self-confessed altoholic. I have alts. I have leveled this guy to 66. There is a slim chance that I have not seen some gems yet, but I'm sure you would agree 61 gem, excluding prismatic gems such as Masterful Amethyst or something like Deadly Subfire that are purely stats based, excluding those gems. I'm sure you would agree 61 is pretty a lot. And in case you want a quick overview, we will be looking at 11 meta gems, 17 core guild gems and uh, 33 tinker gems. I will start obviously just to keep a little bit of a dramatic effect and keep you on the edge of your seat. Uh, I'm going to start with the ones that are, as you can see, on this side, uh, they are not equipped right now. So these gems are not equipped. I will start with those that I obviously am not using. It doesn't mean that all of them are bad. It just means that I have chosen for my playstyle slightly different ones. Now, before we jump in, playstyle is very important. I'm sure you would agree. You would straight away be typing up and saying, Gyro, mate, it depends somewhat on the class you play. Somewhat, not massively, by the way. Uh, but it does depend on the playstyle. It does depend on the playstyle. Are you ranged? Or are you getting right into it? And spoiler alert, I will be releasing some guides on how to actually build your character, like the actual build guides, yeah, including these gems. Uh, uh, my approach is to play tanks. So this is primarily, again, to get other kind of complaints out of the way straight away, this is primarily for people who play similarly to me. We want to sustain uh, damage and we want to do a lot of damage in the process. Presumably, mostly AoE damage. That is, in my opinion, what will allow you to kind of not care. Kind of not care. You don't need to care about the distance. You don't need to care about anything, really. And in this mode... I know you're going to also say, ah, even priests, even mages, even whoever else are overpowered gyro, they don't care, they can tank, basically, at least in the open world, not in the dungeons. I still believe that all-rounded choice should be playing a tank, so stay tuned for those videos. Let's jump into this. Uh, soul tether, tethering your soul to an ally, completely useless. Tireless spirit, for a very short time, gives you gives your party an ability to use their cooldowns without any cost. Completely useless for leveling and gameplay solo in Pandaria. Oblivion Sphere, you coalesce an orb of, of pure void that increases damage taken by enemies and then it explodes. Not completely useless, so I'm gonna give it kind of a medium rating. Situationally you could play with it, especially if you're bored with other abilities and it is your third alt or fourth alt. Not complete throwaway, which is why I'm gonna move it above this line over here. That's how I'm rating these things. Here is a lineup. The ones that are not complete crap go up, okay? Uh, Ward of Salvation, you restore health to an ally and, and uh, grant them salvation, blah, blah. Completely useless. Uh, Locus of Power, you channel arcane power and you infuse yourself with a bit of critical strike, mastery and blah, blah. Completely useless. Precipice of Madness, you shroud your party with uh, the void, granting them a shield, absorbing the damage. Somewhat useful only for tanks who are running specifically group content, and that is Mogushan Vaults and other kind of stuff. But even then, my friends, unless at level 70 it changes, because I'm not at level 70, admittedly, yeah, unless it changes in terms of the mobs starting to hit you hard, I know some of your comments told me that that's exactly what happens. Unless that's the case, I would say that right now, you can largely almost ignore the mechanics in Mogoshan Vaults and in majority of other scenarios and other kind of stuff. As long as you play a tank, you overall have robustness about you, okay? Uh, but this thing may become useful at level 70 uh, when you do need to mitigate extra damage and have an oh shit kind of button. Funeral Pyre, you give yourself strength for one minute, uh, especially as a warrior, obviously, this is very important. This is again class dependent. But for a warrior, you every one second you get a stack of funeral pyre, suffering fire damage per stack. Uh, 
you can remove the pyre if reactivated. Have not tested it extensively, but in my humble opinion, this is situationally useful on maybe even if I had some more visual space here, not to overwhelm you with all these other things in my in my bag, I would probably even rate it a tiny bit higher. I say funeral pyre is useful, however, not during your leveling and situationally. Now, bulwark of the black ox. You channel the bulwark for 10 seconds and then you charge at the enemy. It's something from the good old uh, brewmaster monk arsenal. Listen, as you can see, I'm not using it even as a tank. However, I do think that you inflict physical damage to the enemies. I do think that Bulwark of the Black Ox, if you are a dedicated tank tank, I actually think this would be probably something for you to consider. That is my opinion. You tell me if you've used any of these abilities successfully and maybe I'm not giving them justice. Lifestorm. Summoner, summoner Storm, it calls down bolts of lightning. I tried it. I'm about to reveal the one that I'm running with, uh, GM. Uh, this one was a close contender, but I, th I found those cold down bolts of lightning slightly unpredictable and not necessarily hitting the enemies that I want them to hit, which is why I'm not going to say completely useless, but I'm going to say situationally useful. I've seen more often than not, I've seen a lot of people who are playing with Chiji, the red crane, which basically transforms you into a red crane, gives you abilities and stuff like this. I find it a bit hectic. I recognize that it's a very, very powerful spell. I recognize that it's a lot of fun, probably one of the most fun meta gem spells, which is why it's here, honorable mention and deservingly so. And I'm gonna let it climb a little further here into my virtual sort of lineup. You can see this line over here, how we go. Yeah, useless, useless, somewhat useful, useless, somewhat useful, and Red Crane probably is greatly useful. Final gem, meta gem number 11, is the one I am using. It's a Thundering Orb. It's the simply the uh, most direct you transform into a Thundering Orb on a 3-minute cooldown. As a tank, in a gameplay of a tank, you round up enemies, you transform into an orb, and you burn them all. That's it. Very, very simple. You don't need GG Red Crane extra bar of abilities and like uh, running hectic there and trying to kill them. You simply round them up, kill them all within uh, on a three minute cooldown. Big pools, that's obviously how tanks level again, spoiler alert. That's as far as 11 gems, meta gems are concerned. Now let's go to the cogwheel gems. Cogwheel gems are enabling uh, some situational abilities such as Dark Pact. Dark Pact is, is an exception of the rule, but otherwise Cogwheel gems are generally affecting your movement in this mode of the game. Fantastic, great, especially some classes that are somewhat known to be a little bit slower than others. That is, let's say, Death Knights. You know, known to be a little bit of a, a slower class, yeah, in terms of the movement. Uh, for them, a lot of these things are really, really, really good. And especially the one that I'm using, gem. But let's go. Wild Charge, you fly to nearby allies position, not enemies position. Useless, in my opinion. Leap of Faith, you pull the spirit of a party or a member. It's those annoying things that, tr that priests do in LFA to other people. Useless, in my humble opinion. Sprint, you increase your movement speed by 70% for 8 seconds. Burst of speed, useful, definitely useful. Uh, spirit Walker's Grace, you are permitting movement while casting spells. Completely unnecessary in this simplified mode when you're overpowered already. Useless. Blink, you are teleporting forward. Signature ability of all mages. Very useful. Very useful. I would even move it higher if I have, if I had space here, but you're with me. I'm sure you're following me. Uh, Soul Shape, you transfer into Vulcan for 12 seconds, teleporting forward, increasing your movement. I'd say useful. I'd say it's pretty good, but it's an extra button. Keep that in mind. Heroic Leap. I don't need it because I'm a warrior and I have Heroic Leap already. But for you, if you are a slower class, could be useful. Could be useful. Good ability. Stampeding Roar. You speed up your party. That is only if you run with the party. Otherwise, there are better options. So, useful, but situationally useful. Spirit Walk. Removes movement impairing effects, blah, blah, and increases speed by uh, 60%. Look, I'm going to say useless. While it's while it's speeding you up, that's a good thing, that's not useless, but there are other things that are speeding you up which are better, in my humble opinion. So I'm going to leave it here, but it's not completely useless. Door of Shadows uh, teleports you to a location. 
look very good to reach certain ledges certain other things that are unavailable to you but now in the world of flying and everything unrestricted it's completely unnecessary and there is a cast time it's not instant which makes it useless a disengage disengage is great to disengage from the enemy and stuff especially good for classes that are um, say something like a boomkin or something like a, obviously a hunter but they have they have disengage built in priest would benefit from disengage so i'd say this is useful i ran out of space to move these things up and down as you can see but again you're with me tag pact tag pact is useful for those who want a random uh, who want a random sacrifice of health in favor of getting an absorption shield uh, i think considering the simplicity of leveling and other kind of stuff unless you're heavily involved in the in let's say uh, group content and unless you are generally squishy say something like a rogue or even in some conditions maybe a havoc uh, demon hunter unless you're playing something like this it's rather useless otherwise it could be situationally useful vanish vanish is okay because it allows you to drop it. like if you are in over your head as a only starting to level priest let's say uh, and too many mobs ran onto you and you are not following my advice and not playing a tank uh, you are missing out, my man, uh, or my lady. Vanish would be actually useful for you. Otherwise, a little bit mm, on a useless side. Uh, Death's advance increases your speed. Once again, it's a flavor. It's a it's a different flavor of a speed increase. Somewhat useful. Roll. Well, uh, roll is what mon monks do. Increases your speed, uh, as in uh, charges you a uh, short distance forward without needing to have a target to charge to. Mm, situationally useful. And then Pursuit of Justice increases movement speed and mounted speed by 8%. Only 8%. Useless, in my humble opinion. What am I using? I'm using Trailblazer. Trailblazer is increasing speed passively by 30%, which is nothing to sneeze at. Certainly better than 8%. Uh, when I have not attacked for 3 seconds, which happens frequently enough. 3 seconds is not that long. And it doesn't require an extra button, which is the biggest, which is what makes it supremely useful. Now, the world of Tinker Sockets. Uh, oh my lord, Tinker, there are a lot of things, and I'm actually grateful to Blizzard for giving us a lot of options. We are looking at 33 different gems. Oh, this is going to be fast. I, I cannot afford extending this video any longer, so it will be a rapid fire. Talk to me in the comments down below if you would like explanations or you simply disagree with me. Again, first the ones I have not equipped, then the ones I am running with, aka the best ones. Ank of Reincarnation, unless you are heavily tanking, completely useless. Bloodthirsty Coral, unless you're heavily tanking, somewhat useless but appealing because it is giving you healing blood up to 200 of your maximum health and then it will heal you. It's, it's convenient, it's appealing, so I would move it up. Uh, Tink Master's Shield, grants a shield absorbing damage equal to 15% of your health. It's not much, but it's better than nothing. You could as a tank, obviously only as a tank. If you're not prioritizing damage, then it can be useful, but I'm not going to say it's mandatory. You can see it's not in my setup right now. Uh, Righteous Frenzy, healing and ally, blah, blah, unless you're a dedicated healer, useless. Searing Light, unless you're a dedicated healer, useless. Vampiric Aura, your leech is increased quite massively and you're granting leech to your party. Quite useful, especially for those who run with a party. Go figure. Memory of Vengeance, uh, every 10 seconds you gain strength for every 5% health you've lost. Somewhat useless because you won't be losing health much. Deliverance, 5% of healing is collected as deliverance. Blah, 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 blah. Unless you're a dedicated healer, useless. If you're a dedicated healer, quite useful, in my humble opinion. Savior, healing and ally, blah, blah, gives them a shield. Very useful as a dedicated healer only. Uh, Holy Martyr. Damage suffered is collected as holy martyrdom, blah, 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 consumed to heal. Unless you're feeling very, very uh, like a good Samaritan out there, kind of useless. Warmth, healing taken is increased and overhealing taken is collected by warmth and then they heal something else. If you're a healing paladin or if you are tanking paladin, possibly useful, otherwise useless. Vindication, 10% of damage collected as vindication and then it heals the allies. Again, if you're a giver, if you're someone who is generous, then it's useful. Otherwise, for your own private purposes of leveling in Mists of Pandaria Remix, useless. Uh, now let's go. Victory Fire. Slaying an enemy causes you to erupt, uh, inflicting fire damage and restoring health. 
could be very useful. It was a very high contender for me to equip. However, I, I believe that I have better ones, but this has my eye has always been on this Victory Fire. I think Victory Fire is pretty good. Uh, static Charge. You store Static Charge every 10 seconds. Movement releases Static Charge. Conditional damaging thing could be useful. I found better things. I, I'm not recommending it, basically, but it's not useless. Sun, Ra, Sun Striders flourish. Your critical strikes erupt in a fiery explosion. Looks good, but you need to be critically striking a lot, so unless you have a critical build, useless, otherwise could be useful. Uh, casting your major class cooldown causes you to overload increasing uh, damage. Uh, you are not, uh, typically, you are not casting a major class abilities too often, which is why it's not equipped. However, if you believe that your rotation, your class, your specific spec has a lot of abilities that you would classify as major class cooldowns, then it could be useful. Now, Cold Front. Your abilities have a chance to grant uh, up to 5 allies a shield that explodes, slows down, blah, blah, blah. Could be very, very, very useful. I play solo, which is why for me, again, there are better options. But this is okay. This is a good, good gem, in my opinion. Freedom. Avoidance increased by 20%. Massive, yeah? And allies will be immediately purified automatically from loss of control effects, but it can happen only every 45 seconds. As a tank, if I was tanking four groups, which I know is counterintuitive, isn't it? I'm playing a tanking spec, but I don't, I don't tank four groups in Mists of Pandaria. But if you do, I reckon this is pretty good. I'm going to put it up even here to make a point. Opportunist. You gain critical strike chance for far, four seconds after damaging a stunned enemy. So if you're stunning a lot, this could be massive because you gain 50% critical strike chance. Oh my god. So like for, for a rogue, classically for a rogue, that would be like a godsend, yeah? But for everyone else, questionable. Uh, grounding reduces magic damage taken by a massive amount and redirects the next harmful spell to you as a dedicated tank. Yes, as a anyone else, no. Uh, and fervor, uh, while you are above 80% health, your attacks consume health to in increase to inflict holy damage. Uh, I don't like when my health gets consumed, even though here we probably could get away with it. So up to you. I'm going to leave fervor up to you. You tell me right now if fervor is something you use, especially if you have watched this whole video up to now. Now you should talk to me in the comments down below. Final three things here. We're almost there. Wind Weaver. Uh, your movement speed is increased, blah, blah, and you have immunity to falling damage. Completely and entirely horribly useless. Don't use this gem ever, ever, ever. Uh, Arcanist's Edge. Your attacks consume a portion of the absorb shield to increase, inflict arcane damage. So you need an absorb shield first, then you need this, then you need that. There is a synergy assumed here, which makes it kind of useless. Too complex. Can't be bothered. Can't be bothered. And Brilliance. Versatility increased by a small amount. Party members recuperate their class resource every three seconds. Could be useful, again, if you're a giver, if you're one of those support kind of, not even classes or specs, but support players generally, like you play, like you support others in that style, that could be useful for you. Finally, oh my goodness, I almost, I'm almost talked out and you almost listened to me for too long. Give the video a like if you're still here with me. Really appreciate you. You're special. Uh, let's go through what I have equipped finally. I've already mentioned to you that for the uh, for the meta slot for the meta gem i am using thundering orb thundering orb is pretty good i spoke about it enough uh, for um, the tinker gems i use hailstorm hailstorm is fantastic because it passively builds up a charge of hailstorm and then it pelts things with the with the spikes of cold icicles if you like amazing slay when we attack an enemy that is beneath 10%, we try to execute them, basically. It happens, unfortunately, only once, but it can inflict a lot of damage, especially on thicker targets. And finally, Brittle. The abilities apply passively, Brittle, to the enemies accruing 10% of the, all the damage I deal, which I deal a lot. And when the uh, Brittle enemy is slain, it explodes. It, it, it is amazing. You can see it on the screen. It these things, they just, they synergize well, they work really, really well together. Uh, Meteor Storm. Meteor Storm is something that typically most of my alts got early. I think it's pretty straightforward, pretty good ability. Abilities have a chance, pretty good chance, to conjure a hail of meteors, especially if you fight a lot of enemies. This is fantastic, and for AoE-like play, it's great. Uh, wildfire attacks have a chance to inflict fire damage, and then spread Wildfire. Do I need to say more? Mark of Arrogance. 
Uh, attackers suffer a mark of arrogance inflicting shadow damage every 1.5 seconds and stacking up to 5 times. Again, passive, don't need to do anything about it, it just happens, it's great. Finally, unless I'm mistaken, no, final, no, not finally. Uh, we have Shanji's Grasp, Explosive Barrage. Your abilities have a chance to launch a barrage of fire. Need I say more? Fantastic. Quick Strike. Melee abilities have a 100% chance to trigger <laughs> 4 to 7 additional auto attacks. It's like Wind Fury on fire. This is, uh, this is fantastic. Like fantastic Quick Strike, especially for melee characters. Less so for tanks, let's be honest. But oh my god, for something that does a lot of, a lot of strikes, it's just crazy. A Lightning Rod abilities apply Lightning Rod to the target. Uh, um, allies granted critical strike and stuff. If if I would have second guessed and swapped one of Tinker Gems currently equipped, it's that Lightning Rod. But as you can see, I'm benefiting from it right now. Uh, in Kindle, abilities have a chance to give me a Fiery Shield. I do need to look after myself a little bit, so that is obviously protecting me, absorbing the damage. But enemies suffer damage if they, uh, if they hit me. Uh, Incendiary Terra abilities have a chance to inflict an additional fire damage and horrify the enemy. How good is that? And Frost Armor abilities have an ability. Uh, ha abilities have a chance to give me armor. I'm a tank after all. I don't tank for groups, but I like being protected. Uh, now uh, that's it. Is that it? The rest of it is prismatic gems. My gems are at level three. I couldn't be bothered collecting more. Long video. Thank you very much. If you lasted this long. Totally welcoming your opinions and feedback in the comments below in terms of what gems do you play. Are you playing roughly with my setup? Is it the gems that you're using? Because as you can see, I am preferring AOE gameplay. I just nuke everything. That's how I play. I welcome your opinion, feedback and stay tuned for some more of a build oriented guides for my tanks that I'm leveling in Mists of Pandaria Remix. Thanks for tuning in and goodbye for now.